We had to do something, we weren't going to go straight no-till, and yet we wanted to uh, cut back on our tillage. There's still still density layers from being caused by rain. We tried to run the tool every 30 inches of rainfall because of the silt, silt movement in the soil. And we did a lot of research and came up with this tool as something that fits what we've been taught in soil school, something that'll do what we need to do. Not It's as much what the machine doesn't do as what it does. Yeah, so it fractures the the soil, um, but it really doesn't displace it or move it, right? That's right, yep. There's 10 inches between the tines, and that soil is virtually stays in place, mm. but it gets the side fracture. So it, it gets the air and water holding capacity improved, but your soil is still in place, so the uh, the naturals and all the, the beneficiaries can, can work, mm. enhance the worm population and all mm. that. This field, this spring, I was out, I think it was like April, beginning of May, I was out one evening at 10 o'clock at night listening to the worms, mm. and they were they were working away. Well, and yeah. there's a, this great photo that you have of, I think, a, a, a shovel full of soil that you pulled up with 80 worms on, is that right? Yeah, last spring, last spring. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that wasn't there five years ago? No, no, the worm population has exploded. Wow. We built a custom bar and surface applied, and I, I was really worried. I had two knife bars setting up in the, in the lot, ready to hook back up because I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to get phone calls. I'm, I'm thinking this is really going to be bad. And uh, normally my neighbors that wave at me most of the time when we're home and don't. And, and that year I had two of them stop and tell me they didn't know what we'd changed but keep doing it. In the past when I was injecting it two or three weeks later on a, on a damp cool night, you'd smell it. It didn't smell like raw manure, but you'd smell it. it. Smelled pungent. Now, within five minutes of shutting everything down and leaving, you don't even know we're there. You just think somebody had disc a field or worked a field. I went right across the road over here and did this same test to see what is happening. I know what it looks like at 13 years. <laughs> All right. Right. I want to see if I can, if there's any change after three. Is this starting to show up? And lo and behold, it is. At three years, it's starting to show up. And now on this field over here across the road, we have 36% uh, of the total N that's in the top seven inches. And the nitrate N, which is the one that's most apt to be leaving, which could be the real hot button here, right? It's 46%. So we're actually holding nitrate nitrogen in the top seven inches very well. We're already at 46%. We started, it was in the low 30s, and the middle was 30, and the bottom was 30. When you came along in 2016, like I said, and introduced us to the Curse Buster, it, uh, it was kind of uh, a game changer. Well, we had serious fusarium issues, especially uh, in our Durham. I think there was a point there where we weren't even growing Durham anymore. You know, we were just sticking more to wheat because it was a little bit better. Water's not uh, able to uh, percolate down, it's going to go sideways and along with it it's probably going to drag some salts and whatnot into those low spots and and, uh, and have it sit there and, and then before you know it nothing really wants to grow. Well we, we've gotten off uh, the FOSS train so to speak. I think our FOSS levels have basically gone sideways without any um, without any uh, application from year to year. Uh, last year we had really high nitrogen levels, residual nitrogen in the soil. So we backed off on our on our uh, application, I think 30 pounds. I know it has something to do with aerating the soil or, or getting an aerobic environment in the soil. And we had a canola crop that we seeded, so we seeded it and, and then within a day or two, we, I went out there with the curse buster and I did a couple passes along the end of the field and the crop grew beautifully across the whole field. A couple years ago, we had a, 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 a trash issue, uh, like a, a trash issue from the year before, and I decided to come through afterwards um, with the curse buster to kind of clean everything up. And I had 
been talking with Jim about trying this, so we went out and we did it, and it just did a beautiful job. It weeded the whole field. Um, it leveled off all of the, uh, the piles of straw and stuff beautifully, left all the trash on top, and, and, it, and it was a wonderful emergence of, of wheat. So this year, we kind of went uh, all in on running the Curse Buster right behind the drill. And um, we had a beautiful result. We were able to eliminate a glyphosate pass because we mechanically took out any of the, the weeds that were actively growing. We probably took out any of the weeds that were germinated that hadn't emerged yet, which if you had gone out spraying, you wouldn't have got them anyway. We were taking care of our compaction. So we were kind of killing two or three birds with one stone. You run that machine and everything just jumps up out of the ground. You know, if you bust up some of that compaction, you know, it allows allows moisture to come up as well. And so I think that's really helped with making sure that everything gets germinated nicely. Six, eight, ten inches in the ground. How do you get air moving? Curse busters certainly. Yeah, but, but huge. But, but what causes it? Water, water soil. movement through the water movement through the fracturization of the soil. And I think you ought to jump in there about <laughs> telling about <laughs> water going down and water coming up. Absolutely, the hydralization okay. right, it, it works like a piston. It's pulling that oxygen deeper and deeper into the soil.